First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 37. The Ark of the Lord, the Ark of the Covenant, is now in the place, the tabernacle, that David has set up. Not the one of Moses. Now it's David. The next big move for the Ark would be when Solomon will build the temple. And the Ark will be moved into that most holy place. The stage will be removed and put outside. And then the, the next big move of that Ark will be it will be raptured. You see, raptured? Yeah, well, when the list of the Babylonians take captivity of Judah, it describes the bowls, the snuffers, the candlestick, those two columns, Boaz, and I forget the other name, but it never mentions the Ark of the Covenant, which sends Hollywood to send Harrison Ford to go look for it. And it sends in to people to say that it's been in Ethiopia. And it's No. When you go to the book of Revelation, there is the Ark of the Covenant. And to the fact is, the fact that when that Ark was brought back by the Philistines, it is recorded that they look into the Ark. The mercy seat is, is, might be gone. They look into Going by your English language. Now it's in the place David, the first true king of God. So verse 37, so he, David, left there before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. Asaph, important man of the song, important man of the music. And his brethren, to minister before the Ark continually as every day's work required. So... You just don't bring the ark in and then say, okay, we're done. Leave it without. That's not, you know, you got to continually take care of it. You have to continually maintain. You got to continually rejoice and bless the Lord. And David has put men to that fact that David has a sign. David is not just going to, uh, you know, leave it distraught. And you'll find later on that. The temple service will be distraught. They will not have the services. And when you find the fact is Asaph, he means assembler, to put together. That's what Asaph means. So To be continually singing before the Lord is what we're going to do in heaven. So it's like a yeah. prelude. Well, the pattern that, that God told Moses is, make sure you follow the pattern that I showed you. It looks like Moses went into heaven like John. The pattern of that tabernacle is the pattern of the universe. You go at the bottom of the universe, what's that? That's hell. That's the brazen altar. You go through the solar system, you, what's that? That's that brazen uh, uh, labor, the water. How do you know that? Aren't they astronauts? Don't they go in spaceships? Don't they need an oxygen suit? Kind of interesting. And then when you go through the holy place where NASA can't go, you got the table of bread. You got the candlestick. You got the altar incense. And in that veil that's gone because of Jesus Christ, now you got the most holy of holies. That pattern, that study of the tabernacle that's repeated, that's repeated, that's repeated in Exodus over and over and over. If you don't study that, you're going to get lost in heaven the first few days. You're going to look for that map that says you are here. And how many Christians that go to church, go to church, are not going to realize what's going on? A lot of them at the rapture are going to be shocked. They're going to be looking for a white Jesus. Well, he doesn't come in white. As we met a man Saturday, he's not coming in chocolate either. Jesus is coming tan. All this is, all this is important. This is a great study because it's future. It's heaven. So Asaph has taken the place of Lucifer on earth. And who places Asaph in charge? David, a type of Christ. David, who will give his throne to Jesus Christ. Assembler, assembly, get together. And Obadim, there's that name. I don't know who this Obadim is, but there's possibly maybe two of them in this verse. With their brethren. So Asaph and Obadim. 
Three score and eight. 68. Obadim, also the son of Jehuthim. Now, I don't know. Is that two Obadims? Not sure. We have no idea. And the by and men have said that that means servant of Edom. Well, that's kind of interesting because Edom is an enemy of God and the Israelites. And Zadok the priest, there he is. Now that's not the high priest. Abiathar is the high priest. He's the second priest, and we've studied that already through Boring Chronicles. Go back in Chronicles 1 and go through the 16 chapters. And his brethren, the priests, so it's got to be, the priests have to be of the priests of the sons of Aaron. All priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. Before the tabernacle of the Lord in the high place, that was in Gibeon. So it's up on a hill. It's that place on a hill, on a mountain for all to see. All right, this is what they're to do. To offer burnt offerings unto the Lord. That's important. Because you can offer burnt offerings to anything, anyone. You can offer burnt offerings to any noun. But it's only to the Lord. There are people that offer their offerings to charities. Though the word charities in the Bible. Upon the altar the burnt offerings continually. All right. They're not offering their offerings on the table in the holy place. They're not walking to the most holy place with their offerings. They're not sitting in the backyard of their yard with a, with a, with a fireplace offering it. They are bringing their offerings at that brazen altar. A type of hell. Fire was to never go out. Jesus Christ went into the brazen altar of hell and deposited our sins and came out alive. Jonah did that. To offer burnt offerings Unto the Lord upon the altar burnt offering continually morning and evening. That's that lamb. 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. Every single day that was to be done. David knows the law. David knows what's happening. So when we do look at the sins of Bathsheba and Uriah, David knew. But don't we know the Bible? Aren't we supposed to know the Bible? Aren't we supposed to study the Bible? Do we not still sin? You know, we hide behind David. We hide behind one particular sin when we don't preach out of pulpit our sin. When you got somebody naming that one sin, that one sin, that one sin, that one sin. Well, okay, listen for a while. Find out what sin he doesn't preach. And that's one sin that you never hear. Very rarely hear. That's his problem. And he's hiding behind another sin. He's guilty to preach his sin. To do according to all that is written in the law of the Lord. Which God, he commanded Israel. So David not only knows the law, but he's relying on the Levites. He's relying on the priests. Saying, you better do exactly what that law says. You better not go to the left. And you better not go to the right. Judah will go to the left, and Judah will go to the right, and Judah will go down. They will go up, but they will not walk the way that God commanded them. As you will, as we will go through Chronicles and Second Chronicles, they will walk away from God. They walked away before David under King Saul. The nation goes to a crystal ball. Oh, what am I going to do? The Philistines are here. Call up Samuel. God's not speaking to me because you're a wicked sinner. You defiled the word of God. And with them, Heman, we already seen these names, and Jeduthan, and the rest that were chosen, either by the Levites or by David, who were expressed by name. There you go. 
David called them by name. Why? To give thanks to the Lord. Because his mercy endureth forever. And you see that in the Psalms, his mercy endureth forever. And that's also chanted in the Roman Catholic Church. And when you find that in Psalms, it's for the Jewish people. So David has, before the ark of the Lord, he's got people standing there and they're praising God with music in Psalms. So you take a stranger to the land, he's going to walk up and Solomon will follow this practice. Solomon builds with gold. This place is going to shine as never to be shined before. And when you look at pictures of of Jerusalem today, and I know the dumb of the rock is there, but you know what catches your, your attention is the gold tops, the gold roofs. This place is going to shine under under Solomon. You're going to look like you got the oh man these sunglasses. That's the imitation of the Mormons of of uh, Joseph Smith. That I seen these golden plates. I needed sunglasses or whatever he had kind of glasses. That's not open to anybody. All right, and they're going to walk closer and closer where they got spices, whatever they're going to Jerusalem for. Maybe they're going there for God, and they think they're going to hear. They're going to hear music. They're going to hear holy and righteous music before God. And as they get closer and closer, they're going to hear people talking, and they're going to hear them praising God over and over and over. And we see that kind of thing with. Um, Anna, the prophetess, she's there. People would come to Anna at the temple. She's your prayer warrior. Anna, will you pray for me? And they would come closer and closer, and they would see the splendor of the God of Israel. And it would be like nowhere else you've been in the world. David started this, and it was continued unto Solomon. And I guarantee you'll be, it's too loud. You're too loud, they tell me when I preach. I'm not loud enough to compare what David done. And remember, David looked out, when this all started, David looked out and saw that, you know, there was nowhere for the ark. David could look out his window and he could see the ark, the, the, the tabernacle he built. He can see the music. He can hear the music just by opening his window. Micah opened up her window and got angry with David and got frustrated with David and hated him in, in her heart. What window are you opening? You know? I bet you David probably kept that window open. Not, not to spy on the people, make sure they're doing it, just to, you know, fall off to sleep. Ah, oh, hear the word of the Lord. And if that's the case. He did that. He did that sin with Bathsheba when they were playing the music. Think about it. And he then Heman and Jethuvim, the rest that were chosen, who were expressed by name, to give thanks to the Lord because His mercy endureth forever. And with them Heman and Jethuvim, there we go again, with trumpets. All right, they're to give thanks. They're to say God's mercy endureth forever with trumpets. Symbols for those that should make a sound and with musical, that's the first time music, musical shows up in the Bible. Instruments of God. Did you know there's musical instruments of God? And I guarantee there's musical instruments of Satan. Whatever God has, Satan has a counterpart. God has a city. So does Satan. Jesus Christ has a bride, so does Satan. God has music, so does Satan. God has a church, so does Satan. God is good, Satan's evil. And all the people departed every man to his house. And David returned to bless his house, make his house happy. But well, he's got one problem with chapter 15, 29. One of his parties ain't happy. That ain't going to stop him. He goes home to his wives. He's got wives. He goes home to his sons and his daughters. And says, hey, man, let's just get together, having a good old joyful time. Let's be happy. That's what it is. Let's be happy. 